Hello and thanks for joining us. This week, who judges the judges and is your dream home becoming a nightmare? Well, the latest news on the Auckland housing front is that average prices are now at an all-time high. The median price for a home in Auckland has topped $690,000. In some pockets of the super city, house prices are now up to 30% higher than they were at the peak of the last big property boom in 2007. Well, good news if you're a homeowner and mortgage-free, not so good if you're struggling to get into your first home or trying to rent a place to live. For some time, the Salvation Army has been warning that housing affordability is developing into New Zealand's greatest social policy failure. And Selwyn Manning has been exploring the issue with the Army's social policy spokesperson, Major Campbell Roberts. Uh, Major Campbell Roberts, welcome to the programme. Thank you, good to be here. Yeah. Um, over the recent months, we've seen that Auckland pro the price of Auckland housing has soared to record levels. Um, are you concerned that that extra cost is going to be offset against families who perhaps are already struggling to make ends meet. I'm deeply concerned about that because already we're finding that people are really struggling as far as housing. Housing is one of the major um, contributors to problems that we see with families. Um, the housing costs are astronomical in some cases and uh, taking up 70-80% of their, uh, their income and uh, that just makes it impossible. So any increase in housing, um, we've had a very hot housing market in the past, slowed down a bit, but uh, um, this pickup again does raise real concerns because actually the situation for people at the low end has not changed. It's got progressively worse in Auckland. Mm. I was going to do a comparison perhaps to, to uh, now and, and, and back, uh, say, 1996. Are you seeing a situation that's worse now compared to way back in 1996? Or? Yes, I've been around South Auckland for the last 25 years and um, I haven't seen a situation that's worse in housing than we've currently got. Mm. It's got progressively worse and very difficult for families to actually um, get shelter which is actually adequate for them and which provides them sort of safe and secure housing. Are we talking uh, families who are renting or are we talking families who are also um, paying a mortgage? Yes, we are. It's, it's, it's all over. I mean, you've got uh, families are not able to get into home ownership in the way that they were in the past, so that's blocked. That's a, a door that's closed to them. Um, then you've got people who are renting, paying $400, $450 a week for a house, and not able to uh, fund that alone. So they've got to go with another family, or so you've got two and three families. And I suppose that's characteristically the worst of the problem in South Auckland. Is this got overcrowding? Two, yes, you've yeah. got two or three families and of course what that's contributing to is major problems and things like rheumatic fever for instance where you've got yeah. uh, um, high rates of rheumatic fever entering New Zealand and uh, a lot of that's to do with uh, poor housing. Back in, the, I guess 1996 is a, is a year that I often would reflect back on as reporting in South Auckland at the yes. time. What we saw was in, ev in evidence was overcrowding like you were describing once yes. again is there. And yes, rheumatic fever, but also meningococcal disease on the rise. And we saw a correlation between um, blowouts in the health budget that seemed to be linked to overcrowded housing and housing policy. Yes. Um, um, are the dynamics different? Are the causes different, but the symptoms similar at this stage? Well, I mean, what the, the major problem is one of supply and uh, also the fact that you've had uh, the market inflated by, uh, like if people, people going into the housing market, you've got a house that comes up for sale. Mm. Um, you might have uh, six people interested. Three of them will be investors and three of them will be homeowners. The homeowners haven't got a chance because the investors will always win mm. out. And so uh, this investment into housing and, and speculation in housing has driven the price up. Mm. And uh, of course it's been, uh, it's been confused by the fact that we've had uh, difficulties of supply, we've had an increase of migration into Auckland and that makes it a very real and difficult situation. In a recent report, um, that, that is a Salvation Army report that's examining uh, this whole issue, uh, it, it details that the, 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 the cost factor, if you like, the affordability factor of, of rent and, and, and accommodation costs is pretty much the same for some time. It's saying that it still requires about 18 hours of full-time, uh, uh, 18 hours of work in a full-time type situation to actually pay for the rent or, or your accommodation costs. 
does that mean that you know the report's findings are, are saying it's okay, or is it saying that a lot of people are not in a 40-hour week, so you still have to pay that 18 hours worth of work, and so the proportion of, of their disposable income is um, being set up in accommodation costs. So I just need to clarify. Yes, on that's that. right. Uh, you're, you're exactly right. The, in fact, uh, rents have stayed reasonably stable, more stable than we perhaps would have expected. But um, what's happened is that people, one, it's more difficult to find uh, rental for a start. Mm. Um, the second thing is that uh, people are not in employment like they were, and so you've got a lot of people in part-time employment, casualised employment, um, limited hours, not earning the same amount of money, and therefore not able to afford uh, even a rent that they were able to afford in the past. So, uh, but now we are getting to a situation where rents are starting to rise. Have, have, have landlords been holding rents at previous levels, despite the increase in the average price of a house in the Auckland region going up to $690,000? Yes. Have yeah. they been kind of maintaining a level, um, taking a social kind of obligation on themselves, perhaps? I'm not sure there's been a social obligation. What, what you find is that rents are very much driven by the availability of money uh, in, in, the, in the particular target group. So if there's a low socioeconomic area that is, is struggling, then yes. the rents will The rents maintain. will, yes. I mean, the reality is they can't go, and there hasn't been an increase in uh, accommodation supplement. I mean, we're spending uh, two, you know, up to $2 billion in housing assistance, $1.6 in uh, accommodation supplement. Now that's being poured in, of course. So that's government uh, assistance going in just to maintain the status quo. Um, there's not any new housing appearing for that $1.6 mm. It's just actually keeping people in there. Um, so the accommodation supplement has certainly helped to maintain people in the housing, but it's not actually doing anything about the real housing crisis. Now, of course, you're um, the Salvation Army's representative on the, uh, the parliamentary unit um, that interacts between um, the advocacy side of Salvation Army and the government. Uh, That's correct? right, yes. yes. Um, what would you expect government and opposition MPs to do as far as solutions to the problem you're, you're describing here? Well, I think that there's a number of things. I think, one, we've got, to, uh, we've got to forget about a sort of one big lever approach. Uh, I think that's been a problem for housing policy in New Zealand in the past, that we've sort of said, well, let's find the big lever that's going to change everything. Well, I don't think that big lever actually exists. We've got a whole lot of things that actually need to occur. Just first off, what is that big lever that you're talking about? Well, I mean, I think in the past we've sort of said, OK, look, it's not working, so we need to introduce accommodation settlement. OK, it's not working, so we need to introduce state housing. OK, it's not working, so we need to introduce something else. You know, I don't think there is one thing that you can do. But what does need to happen is a range of things. And I think in terms of the uh, home ownership policies, that certainly that needs to change. Now, it's very welcome, I think, to see um, a, the, the Labour Party suddenly starting to grip mm. hold of this and mm. say, putting out a, uh, producing 10,000 houses a year and uh, at a particular price. Now, people are tending to say, well, you know, we can't provide housing at 300,000. Well, the reality is we've got to, if we're going to actually house our population. Mm. We've got to find ways of doing that. So it does need a huge creative approach by government towards home ownership. There mm. does need to be targets set about what we're going to do. There are other things that need to happen. We need to uh, look at the inequity between accommodation supplement and people going into state housing. At the moment, if you uh, um, are lucky enough to get into a state house, you're a lot better off than somebody who, who has to rent in the private market mm. and only get accommodation supplement. We need to, I think, look at uh, what's been happening in the speculation market and around, uh, and I think there does need to be a capital gains tax added so that you take some of that speculation out of housing and uh, realise that actually this is something that does mm. need to be done uh, for the long term. So yeah. you, you described some of the Labour Party policies yes. on this that perhaps they're able in opposition to develop solutions yes. and listen to people like yourself on the ground. Are you getting the attention of the Cabinet itself, the Cabinet Ministers around this issue? I think to be fair that the uh, National Party for the first time has really tackled housing during its term and it's, it's tried to do some things and I think uh, I was certainly part of uh, a ministerial housing uh, advisory group 
which recommended some changes. The difficulty is things have happened far too slowly. And uh, I don't think governments have the courage that's needed. And uh, to be frank, the last Labour government uh, didn't have that courage either that was needed. So we saw in the 90s um, the advent of um, market rents for state house tenants. Yes. I think in the first term, the Labour-led government changed that to um, a, a more, equ what it said was a more equitable kind of regime. You're saying that it, it then became complacent from that point Absolutely. On? I think that uh, that was a great move to go back to uh, um, those sort of affordable rents and the present government has continued with those. Um, but and the, the current government has been putting it out to the community trusts. And that's right, and, and the, the community does need, and, and that's a very welcome thing that the, the uh, current government has been trying to engage the community sector because that does need to happen. And uh, the problem in New Zealand is that we don't have a developed community housing sector like we do, say, in Europe. So there hasn't been any, the alternative for somebody has been either a state house, a, rental ha a, a private rental house, or home ownership. Whereas, in fact, in other environments, you have a whole lot of community housing providers who provide a range of products that are available. Now, those are starting to develop in New Zealand, and that's a good thing, but they need a lot more investment uh, made into them, and government needs to be doing that. Okay, we're, we're heading into the Christmas period now, obviously. Uh, uh, many people out there, many families are finding that they're hard to make ends meet right now. And um, what can they do for themselves through this period, from you know through December and through the holiday period, to make it easier for them to relieve the burden somewhat of the pressures that Christmas brings, perhaps? Well, of course, in a sort of personal uh, situation, people need to be clear about their spending and make sure that they're not committing themselves to more than is reasonable at this stage. Um, you're right, this is a very painful time for a lot of people that uh, at this stage of the year they just are not able to afford things and of course mm -hmm. uh, the pressure is on to, to be doing all sorts of things. In terms of this housing thing, I think it's very important that people don't get carried away at Christmas and forget to pay the rent and mm -hmm. uh, forget that actually they're going to need those things. But I think um, lots of families in New Zealand are needing a massive injection into this area of housing and I think the sort of Christmas present that uh, government could be bringing and is, is really a s real seriousness about the crisis that's facing housing in New Zealand this point. I mean we've, I had for instance a family come in last week and uh, after the, the benefit had been calculated and they were getting uh, extra support, um, they had $40 a week for mum and two children. Now $40 a week, um, how are you going to manage on a normal week, uh, mm. fa Farley as Christmas? So it is really tough for mm. many families at this stage. So food would become like a, uh, something that was in addition to that. Um, you're seeing increases in food parcels, etc. still at this stage? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And of course, uh, at this time of the year, we have a whole lot of, uh, we have toy appeals, we have uh, food appeals, we have all sorts of things like that. Mm. To just provide that extra bit of support and assistance mm. that uh, will make Christmas a little bit happier for people. And at the end of the day, Christmas is about peace? Uh, goodwill to others? It is, and uh, I think that one of the, perhaps one of the things that we can all do in terms of this sort of Christmas period is uh, realise that uh, there are people in, in need out there and perhaps modifying our own attitudes, modifying our own demands um, is uh, something that will contribute to that peace and uh, goodwill. Major Campbell Roberts, thank you very much. Thank you. Selwood Manning with the Salvation Army Social Policy Spokesperson Major Campbell Roberts. Next, the pros and cons of judging our judges. <laughs>